Welcome to the coolest stuff on the planet. Hey everybody, welcome back to Coolest Stuff on the Planet. Uh, my name is Matthew and I'm here with my co-hostess with the most S, Rachel. What up? And uh, where are we going today, Rach? Well, we are headed back to the City of Lights, also known as Paris. And we're going to check out another super famous landmark. Oh. Um, this time we are going to check out the Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe translates to Arch of Triumph, or less literally, Triumphal Arch. And that's uh, that's generally what they're called, Triumphal Arches. So you may remember that we ran into a couple of these back in Rome. Yeah, the Arch of Titus, the Arch of Septimus Severus. Mm -hmm. I don't think we mentioned the Arch of Constantine, but that's another no. one. So the idea of this kind of Triumphal Arch is most often associated with Roman architecture, although the idea for it may be much older. They're also known as memorial arches or commemorative arches, um, basically because they're created uh, to commemorate a special event yeah. or a special person, usually associated with the military. Mm -hmm. um, and they were also used for these uh, triumphal processions. The uh, victorious army would come into the city and like parade under the arch. <laughs> so that's a big part of what they're for. The triumphal arch craze kind of caught fire and they just started popping up all over the place. You can find examples all around the world. Here are a couple of the more famous ones. You've got the aptly named Triumphal Arch in Lisbon, Portugal, the Marble Arch in London, and also the Arch of Triumph in Pyongyang, North Korea. It's ah. a really beautiful one, and Neat. I had never seen it before. There's also the very famous um, Gateway of India in Mumbai, yes, yeah. which is it was a very famous Triumphal Arch. But all of those are tiny, tiny, tiny compared to the one that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. because the Arc de Triomphe is the largest triumphal arch in the world today. It was modeled on the Arch of Titus, and it was commissioned in 1806 by Napoleon, and it was to commemorate his military victories. Yeah, though sadly, Napoleon never got to see his arch finished. Right. It, w it wasn't completed until 1836, which is 15 years after his death. But his remains were ceremonially carried underneath the arch en route to where he was entombed. Mm -hmm. And that really started the trend of um, that sort of event happening at the Arc de Triomphe, mm -hmm. like state funerals, um, important national events. So this arch is pretty uniquely situated in the city. Now, if you look where we are above the arch right here, what we're looking at is the arch, and the circular thing around the arch is a roundabout. And you'll notice... There are 12 major avenues that are connecting up with this roundabout, at the center of which is the Arc de Triomphe. And it's really cool because it really is, it's, it's, it's at the center of the world's largest roundabout. This is a crazy, crazy traffic situation here with this mm -hmm. roundabout. And whatever you do, you don't want to cross the square like to get to the arch yeah. or you will die. Oh, wow. <laughs> like they were not mincing words. Um, you can visit the arch, kind of like the Eiffel Tower. You can go up to the top. If you are athletic, you can climb 284 stairs to reach the observation deck at the top. But if you are less athletically inclined or, you know, you need, you can't go upstairs, you can also take the elevator. Nice. So. And according to most sources, the safest way to get over to the Ark uh, is to go through this underground passageway that goes directly, it goes directly to the base of the monument. Oh, also when you're there, you can check out the French Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Mm -hmm. which is, it's really cool to look at. So the tomb has been there since 1930, and it houses the body of an unknown soldier, French soldier mm -hmm. from World War I. Every evening, uh, there's a flame, there's a memorial flame that is relit to honor this fallen soldier and all the fallen soldiers of, of, of France. Well, everybody, I guess that's the end. Uh, make sure... Oh, wait, we have a quick little listener mail. I don't. Hopefully we'll have some time for this. Some, some human mail? Yes. It's been a while since we've done one of those. This message comes from Randy. Randy says, I enjoyed your podcast. Oh my, thanks, Randy. <laughs> I have a great personal romantic story about the Eiffel Tower. My first date with my wife, Jody, was in Paris in 2003, and our first kiss was at the top of the Eiffel Tower. Awesome. Aww. That was my word. Two days later, we had dinner for her birthday in the Jules Verne restaurant on the second level. A magnificent gourmet feast. Two years later, I surprised her and proposed to her at the Jules Verne restaurant, the same year that Tom Cruise did it with Katie Holmes, but I beat him to the punch. Nice. Whoa, nice job, Randy. <laughs> Finally, we married the next year at Paris, but this time in the Paris Hotel in Las Vegas. 
<laughs> nice. This is kind of a Paris-themed romance going on here. Mm-hmm. That's the only place that I've stayed in Vegas, is at the Paris. Oh, really? And it was great. So, good job, Randy. <laughs> Well, I think that's a that's a nice note to end it on, Matt, huh? I think a romantic so, Romantic note. So um, that's the end, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time for more cool stuff. Yes, make sure you download the new iPhone app that has us on it. It's awesome. That is all. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And let us know what you think. Email travelpodcast at HowStuffWorks.com. Don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.